Welcome to Journey Church. Our church exists to help people find God, experience freedom, discover their purpose, and make a difference. If you have any questions about Journey Church, please visit us at ourjourney.tv. Welcome home. Welcome to Journey Church. Today, Pastor Vince brings us part four of The Gifts of Christmas with Sabbathing Well. So over the last few weeks, we've talked about a few gifts that God gave us. Silence and solitude, um, simplicity. I want to mention uh, today and give us another gift that God gave us. If you're taking notes, and I hope you are, feel free to use your smartphone and take photos as you feel the Holy Spirit talking to you. But that is Sabbathing well. Sabbathing well. Now, for 22 years of ministry, I have not done this very well. In fact, any time... I would preach a series that had anything remotely do, to do with like the Ten Commandments. I would always get someone else to preach commandment number four. For those of you who know that is, it's keep the Sabbath, keep it holy. Because I always felt like um, as, as, a, as an individual um, that I did not do this very well. And, and mainly for two reasons. One, because of justification. Um, I always felt like, well, because I'm the pastor and I preach on Sunday, this is kind of what I do. I work on Sunday. Um, and, and so even today, I mean, every Sunday I come in about 6 o'clock and then I break for lunch and then I come back after lunch and stay till 6 o'clock. It's a work day for me. And so I always justified not Sabbathing because my Sabbath was the Sunday that I'm the busiest. Uh, the other part that I would say the reason why I don't Sabbath well is because um, I didn't fully understand what the Sabbath was or what its purpose was. And so what I want to invite us is to unpack this together. Love and hurry are incompatible. In fact, if we're very honest, you cannot love if you are busy. Now, this, is, this was mind-blowing concept for me because as a, as a pastor and as a leader, I mean, and as Christians, don't we do the things we do because we love people? I mean, don't we go out and do outreaches? Don't we do ministry events? Don't we come on Sunday? I mean, all these things we're doing, we're doing because we love God and we love others. But I would constantly find myself, and I think many of us would agree, that we're doing those things but then our reaction to when things don't go well don't resemble the way Jesus would react. In fact, what was sobering for me to think about is that a majority of the situations that Jesus found himself in when it comes to ministry, what we would call ministry that he did, 90% of the miracles he did and the ministry he performed was, was when interruptions happened. He's on a minute, Bible tells us he was on a journey to go somewhere, and someone would interrupt him. And every time Jesus was interrupted, he always gave grace. He always gave wisdom. He always gave truth. He always gave compassion. And I would find myself, like I think some of us would in this room and watching online, that, that we're so focused on the job that when interruptions happen, we tend to be short. We tend to be sarcastic. We tend to, or, or maybe we don't say anything, but we roll our eyes. Like, I can't believe they don't get it. How many times do I have to explain this? And the eye roll syndrome is just a peek into our heart that we are living hurried lives. And it's impossible to be in a hurry and love. I'm going to give us a couple of scripture verses, and you can write these down. I'll read them to us, but for your own note-taking and study time. Genesis chapter 2, verses 2 through 3, as well as Exodus chapter 20, verse 8 through 11. Genesis 2, 2 and 3 says this, And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had done. I always found it intriguing that the Bible says God rested. Anyone else find that just kind of maybe humorous or, or confusing even? That, that God, the all-powerful, the mighty, heavenly ruler supreme who can do anything, he rested? Interesting. 
Verse 3, then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because in it he rested from the work which God had created and made. Exodus chapter 20, verses 8 through 11. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but on the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. In it you shall do no work. Wow. You, nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your male servant, or your female servant, or your cattle, or strangers. In other words, I don't want anyone working on Sabbath. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth. It's kind of this comparison. It's like if you think you're so important, Vince, that you've got to work. Remember God, the creator and all-powerful? Well, he didn't. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for that. And then it concludes with this. Then the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. What if I was to tell you that... There is a promise that God gives you and me to live a less hurried life and be more productive. It's called the gift of Sabbath. Now, many of us who've grown up in church, we associate Sabbath as a day. And let me just say this, you are correct. You're not wrong. But I want to implore to you that if we Sabbath well, then it gets in every day of our week. That Sabbath becomes a lifestyle that doesn't just affect one day, but affects all your days. In fact, if we're going to Sabbath well, then we have to allow it to get into every day of our week. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 3, if you're kind of like, well, that's Old Testament. I'm more of a New Testament guy. Here's one for you. Let us, therefore, be diligent. Uh, That word diligent is almost like the, the two words we've been saying. Ruthless, eliminate. Let us, therefore, ruthlessly eliminate hurry to enter that rest lest anyone fall according to the same example of disobedience. It's amazing that there's this concept of not resting is kind of equal to sinning. And I said in week one that the, the goal of sin and the goal of hurry are really the same. To get you off kilter, off centered from living a holy, diligent life in Christ. I would say that built into the rhythm of God's creation, there's rest. We see this in creation. And not only built into the rhythm of life that God created, but also in our human souls. Our human souls long for and crave and need the need for rest. Now, Sabbath, the word Sabbath is a Hebrew word, uh, Shabbat. And from it, we get four English words that I want to share with you today to understand how Sabbath moves. And and that's the key understanding I want to help us today because Sabbath has a pattern. Sabbath has a rhythm. And isn't it true that a lot of us in here and watching, we would say immediately pump the brakes because the only rhythm of life we know is it's out of control? I mean, we've got global issues, we've got economic issues, we've got issues in our city, in our town, in our state. I mean, everything is is spinning out of control, and yet we're supposed to live in a rhythm, syncopated lifestyle the way Jesus did when we've got culture that he lived in and culture that we live in. I mean, how? Glad you asked. Here's the um, first word, the movement of Sabbath. And it's the word stop. Everyone say it with me. The purest word of Sabbath that we can really kind of crystallize and define is this word stop. Now stopping work specifically for a day is not the same as having a day off. How many of you have learned that? You know, we work Monday through Friday. Some of us, maybe some of us, six days, maybe some of us, seven days. 
But we work this rhythm, and then Saturday, we call it a day off. But what do we do on our day off? All sorts of work, right? We've got the honey-do list. We've got taking care of the lawn. We've got running errands. We've got the paying of bills. But, but we're supposed to, if we Sabbath well, designate a time that we don't do any of that. But it doesn't mean just stop doing. It also means stop thinking about doing. Some of us, maybe, maybe we just create a checklist for the week. We plan out what's going on. Not only, not only stop wanting and stop doing, but stop desiring. That, that some of us, maybe we use our day off and, and it's a day that we go shopping. It's a day we go get groceries. It's a day we're doing things for the family. But what about not just stop working and not just stop thinking about working, but what about stop wanting If you find yourself stressed out, stop. Uh, Sounds like what a man would say. (laughs) We'll we'll unpack it, okay? Here's the second thing that Sabbath means. Not only stop, but rest. Rest. My family will tell you that I'm the worst at this. In fact, my wife has openly confessed to me that um, she feels guilty if I come home from a long day's work and she's taking a nap. And I would tell her, good. <laughs> and and um, I'll, I'll harass my father-in-law. I'll try calling him at all hours of the day and I never know which nap he's on, nap two or seven or, or nine. And, and I'll harass him about that. And, and the great wisdom of this man of God will say to me, Jesus took naps all the time. It's like, yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but. And so I've come to learn how holy and righteous my wife is. How the lifestyle of resting is what we need. It says in Genesis, and we read this, that God rested. This is physical, this is mental, this is emotional, and even spiritual. You can already see how if we link this concept of stop and resting, that many of us justify what we do as Sabbath, but it's not really Sabbath. Over the years as pastoring, I've heard so many people, well, Pastor Vince, I didn't make it to church because I'm, I'm just enjoying the nature as I watch for that deer to kill it. And again, I'm, I'm nothing against deer hunting, but you're not Sabbathing. Well, I, I love to take my family and we go, we go camping on Sunday. Well, that's great, but it's not Sabbathing. We all have desires of things we want to do. And when we think of the things we enjoy that, that is refueling and, and resetting us, but it's not what we're doing that is the issue. It's what we're not doing that's the issue. Here's a third one, delight. There should be this delight that comes over us. Again, we tend to think that if we're doing an activity that we enjoy, a classic example, um, one of the things I've explained to my family on Sundays is that, well, I come up after lunch because for me, one of my hobbies that I enjoy doing is video work. I love to do videos. I grew up with a camcorder in my face. My dad had an audio video store. We always had the latest gadgets. And so for me, you know, having a phone that is now a video camera, man, I utilize that. I do it all over town. And and here in church, I I do videos and I put together the online service. And it's, it's fun. It's exhilarating. But it's also me justifying Because delight can't trump stopping and resting. In fact, we've got to learn to find our delight in God. Don't answer this out loud, but is it possible for you to find delight in God? Do Do you have a loss of gratitude? Have you lost your joy in being content? If so, it's only regained by delighting in God. 
it says that God blessed the Sabbath. There is this pleasure or delight that God has for us when we stop, when we rest. Now, Sabbath is to a spirit of restfulness what basketball practice is to a ball game. In other words, if you and I are not Sabbathing well, then we will not do the things God called us to do very well. It's, it's, Sabbath is to our soul what a band practice is to a concert, what dress rehearsal is to opening night. We cannot do those things that God has called us to do, that we love to do, if we're not taking time to Sabbath. Sabbath is how we practice and prepare our minds for what matters most. In fact, if I could say it this way, practicing practicing Sabbath weekly is how we retrain our mind and imagination to delight in God. The last one is worship. Stop, rest, delight, and worship. For many of us, it's why we practice coming to church on Sunday. It's why we take time out of our busy schedules, out of our work lives, to come together and worship. But let me just say this, that Sabbathing on a Sunday as we come together and worship is not limited to 10 a.m. to 11.30, 11.45, noon on a Sunday. In fact, it's just a couple of hours of a 24-hour Sabbath. Jesus blessed it. He made it holy. That means it's a, it's a holy day, not a holiday. Now, if you're sitting here and watching, listening, you may be thinking, that sounds like a pipe dream, Pastor Vince. I mean, it sounds like something unattainable. It sounds like something out of this world. And the answer to that I would give you is yes. It is out of this world. It is in a realm that you and I know nothing about. And God invites us to step into this out of this world lifestyle. One person said it so famously. Oh, we love God. We just don't know how to sit with God. But oftentimes, we're so busy doing things that we haven't spent proper time to actually become like Jesus. And because of that, we go, well, why am I exhausted all the time? Why, why, why do I twinge when things don't go well? It's because we didn't do the first thing. We didn't spend time with Jesus. And a lot of times we get that order flip-flopped. As I mentioned, today we have began our morning with what we'd call worship. And we think as a day, as starting with the morning, and then we have the day, and then we end at night by going to sleep. But in Genesis, that's not how God created the day. In Genesis, we see over and over, it says, there was evening and then morning next day. The day starts with an evening And ends in the morning. I know that this sounds counter culture. But what if you started your Sabbath on a Saturday evening? That you shifted gears and created an evening mindset that we're going to enter into Sabbath now. And part of our entering into Sabbath is, as a family, we're going to take time and and experience God. I I know, this sounds crazy. Listen, it's one of the things that I attempted to do early on in my ministry as a pastor. And my family would tell you that I had like this this rule. We don't do anything past 5 o'clock on a Saturday. Or they would go do things, but me, I'm focused. This is where I'm getting my no zone for me because I got to focus to deliver God's word on Sunday. Spend it in prayer, spend it just, just, but I was doing it so um, legalistically. 
that I wasn't doing the rest of Sabbath. There wasn't delight. There wasn't resting. And there sure wasn't stopping. But what if you sat down as a family unit and said, we're going to take 24 hours. We're going to take the the Sabbath day. And we're going to start it at 4 p.m. And as a family, I want us to gather together and have a meal together. That we sit around the table. And and I'm not just saying this to you. I'm saying this to my children as well. Because when I get home, I'm going to sit down with my children and family and say, we've got to get this. And I know you love hanging out with your friends. I know, listen, you got all week to plan those things. But as a family, I want Saturdays for us to clock a 24-hour time frame. That we stop, that we rest, that we delight, and we worship. That we start a Saturday night, and and as we go into the, the bedtime ritual, guess what you can do in your sleep? Nothing. I mean, what better way to rest than to sleep at night? And then waking up and concluding our 24 hours by having time to worship together as a church, to serve one another. And then what if we had lunch together as a family and concluded our 24 hours doing what a family does and resting, taking naps in the afternoon, making love, fellowshipping as a family unit. Sabbath is used to restore our soul this way. Mark chapter 2, verse 23 through 27. Jesus was getting in trouble with some religious people. Jesus was out on the Sabbath with his disciples, closest men to him. And they were walking through a field of grain. And some of the disciples were breaking off the heads of grain and eating it. And the religious leaders said, violation holding on disciples, back 10 yards. No, they, they, were, they were complaining to Jesus saying, these disciples, you holy, they're working on Sunday because it had become so legalistic that doing anything was breaking the Sabbath. And Jesus says to them, hey, you know, what did David do? R- read it, it's a great story, look it up, Okay. It's a great story. Jesus says, well, look at what David did when his men got hungry. Jesus gives this to these religious leaders. He says this, the Sabbath was made for man. And God wants to heal you and me so emotionally that he gave us this gift. If you're here this morning and you've heard what I've said and immediately you think, well, Pastor Vince, That sounds great. God bless you. You're trying so hard up there. But I'm just just not into a Sabbath concept because, listen, I'm outgoing. I love, I get energized. I love to stay busy. God rested. Yeah, but Pastor Vince, I mean, I've got a really demanding job and there's just no way for me. God rested. You don't understand. I've got small kids in my house that God rested. If your first gut reaction is to list all the reasons why you can't, then it's evident that you're struggling with self-control. Our desire to be in control is a form of self-coping to cover the fact that we lack self-control. And I'm not here to make a blanket statement that many pastors before me have made across the generations of church life. I'm not here to say, well, just give God control as if it's some easy thing to do. Because here's what I've learned. God cannot take control of someone who is out of control. Now, there's two types of of out of control that I think are in this room. The first group is what I would say the the feeling overwhelmed. And, And let me give this analogy that we can understand. 
Let's say there's a special car and you're driving it, but as things get difficult in life, and in other words, as you start to feel anxious, overwhelmed, insecure, as you feel out of control, what those who feel overwhelmed do is they quit driving and they climb in the back seat and start yelling at other people to take control. And as the car is driving with you in the back seat, asking someone else to do the steering, asking someone else, well, if I didn't have that type of childhood growing up, bumping into cars, weaving across lanes, the overwhelmed person with a lack of control is asking God, take control because I can't do it. And here's the thing. God is in the back seat with you saying, I'm not going to take control when you're out of control. Then the other flip side of this is those that are over controlling. And the over controlling, they don't ever leave the driver's seat. And they're driving. And whether it be God or whether it be the passengers next to them, whoever is close to the over controlling person, when they suggest to stop, they get anxious, just like the overwhelmed. When they're told, why don't you turn over here? Don't tell me how to drive. I know how to drive. I've been this way before. Their, their, their arms seem to lock up and they're unable to make the course correcting because they are so in control. In fact, they start panicking. They start going faster. They freeze up. And they too hit the brick wall. It's why we're frustrated in allowing God to guide us because we place ourselves beyond the help that God wants to give. So how do we do this? I want to give you a couple thoughts because I'm going to primarily give you what the Sabbath is and the goodness of it. How to do it is totally up to you. Because I'm not you. I don't have the struggles you have. I only have the struggles I have. And I can only tell you what I've been doing. And it's, it's joyfully wrecking my life in a good way. I'm finding things that weren't connecting in my mind properly starting to snap together better. So here's the first one. How to practice the Sabbath. Well, first, you need to start where you are at. And maybe for you, Saturday nights don't work because of your job schedule or because of family commitments. I get that. But start somewhere. See, the way that we control in that car analogy, the way that we allow God to control us is that we stay in the driver's seat. We're still pushing the gas and the brakes and the steering wheel and the gear shift and the clutch. We're still in control, but we listen to God and those around us when they tell us some directions. If God says stop, we stop. If God says slow down, we slow down. That's how we stay in control while giving God control. See, exercising self-control in order to be in control. Here's the second thing. Ask yourself, <clears throat> what can I do in a 24-hour time frame that would give me joy while not doing what I would normally do? See, this is, this, is, this is one of these things I've had to really draw back and say, well, I enjoy doing the video work. I enjoy editing and cutting and making this program. I enjoy that. But what can I do that's not that, that still gives me a sense of fulfillment and wonder and awe and delight in God? Don't allow the setbacks and goals that you've set for yourself to be so unrealistic that you're constantly failing. But set realistic goals that if you miss a beat or two, it's okay. Get back on the horse. Amen? 
Now here's something that's interesting going back to Genesis that I want to end with. In Genesis, we see God do some things. He makes man and woman, and then he says to them, um, be fruitful and multiply. He, he makes animals, and he says to them, be fruitful and multiply. Animals, be fruitful and multiply. I bless you to do that. Humans, be fruitful and multiply. I bless you to do that. And then a day. I'm going to bless this day. This means that if you listen, that just like animals and just like humans, Sabbath has the ability to reproduce. Sabbath has the ability to procreate, to actually reproduce life. It's why there's this promise and gift from God that if you and I will work hard and diligently six days, take the seventh day, stop. Take the seventh day, rest. Take the seventh day, delight. Take the seventh day. And as you worship, delight, rest, and stop, allow the Sabbath to create a rhythm in your life throughout the week. It's how you'll Sabbath well. Thank you for being with us online. Our desire is to journey with you however you want to connect with us. We look forward to doing life with you. Now, let's go this week and be the church in our community as we focus on loving God and loving others. See you next week. For more information about our church, visit us at ourjourney.tv.